All right, young scholars. Um, I'm hoping that today's exercises work. Um, literally spent the entire earlier section that starts at 10 a.m. Learning about all the issues that you guys have been having with Excel here, um, that the help desk isn't helping you. Um, James had some issue where his account was somehow deleted. Um, so I forwarded all this stuff to the help desk and they basically kind of implied that you guys are all making this up. Um, so I've involved uh, Dr. Cruz, my department chair, uh, in this to try and resolve uh, all of these issues. Um, because next week we have our midterm review and midterm. So we should not be having any issues. And this may be why there's been so many issues with the homework so far. Um, I didn't have a chance to put together any of the groups. I told you guys, um, if you hadn't put the groups together by last night, I was going to um, just go ahead and make some. So I'll do that later today and I'll post up an announcement, excuse me, um, with what the groups are gonna be. So today we're just gonna do this in-class exercise. So if you click the in-class exercise, you'll notice that there's a bunch of instructions here. If you scroll to the bottom, there's this ICE file. So you'd click the three buttons there and select download original file. And you'll notice that a workbook with eight worksheets inside of it opens up. <clears throat> so with this worksheet today, we're going to, in Q1A and Q1B, we're gonna play around with recommended charts. And worksheet Q2, we're going to learn how to use the date function. In worksheet Q3, we're going to learn how to add numbers from two different worksheets. We more or less did that previously, but it's just going to be two simple numbers we're going to add together rather than an entire formula like we did with the bakery, cleaning goods, et cetera. Then for worksheet Q4 and Q5, we're gonna do pivot tables, which we're gonna do again on Wednesday um, for homework seven. Then worksheet Q6, I'm gonna show you guys how to sort and filter. Then worksheet Q7 is going to be conditional formatting. And then worksheet Q8, we're going to do goal seeking. <clears throat> so when you open up your workbook and you're in worksheet Q1A, click on the insert tab and you should have this little bar chart there with a question mark next to it that says recommended charts. So we're gonna click on that and it gives us an error message. That's because we need to select our data that we're going to do. So we highlight column A and B and then we click recommended charts again we get options that pop up for us. So click through the different recommended ones until you select stacked area. That's the one we're gonna use for worksheet Q1A. <clears throat> and when you click okay, it simply populates that chart into the worksheet. All we're gonna do is click here where it says AMT of inventory and click inside it 
and write it out to say amount of inventory. This way it looks more professional. <clears throat> Everyone clear on that one? All right, so then worksheet Q1B, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna highlight our data. We're gonna click the insert tab, select recommended charts, and we're gonna select the first option it gives us here, clustered column. And when we click okay, it drops that chart in we're going to click here where it says annual sales. Click before the annual. And simply type car company annual sales. <coughs> Excuse me. And now we're a fourth of the way done. Now on worksheet Q2, we're going to utilize the date function. So we're given a coupon code, we're given the expiration date, we're asked to find how long it's been expired and what would happen if we're given an extra 60 days with the coupon. So in order to use the date formula, we do equals date, open parentheses, we put in the current year, comma, the current month, comma, the current day. So it should be 2024, comma, two, comma, 26. And then minus B2. We wanna find out how many days since the coupon expire. <clears throat> when we hit enter, we find out it's been 2,583 days since January 30th, 2017. <laughs> we click back in and auto fill down. So now we want to find out what would happen if we had an extra 60 days for the coupon. So we enter the formula the same. Equals date, 2024, comma, two, comma, six. But this time, instead of minus B2, we do plus 60. We're adding 60 days to that. So 60 days from today is 426-2024. We click back in and auto fill down. It's the same for all of them. <clears throat> so do I need to review either of those formulas? Did I go too quick? No? All right. Then on to worksheet Q3. And if you notice, as I'm going through, I'm just going through these instructions here as I do this, because I have a printout of them and it's just easier for me to do that. So for three, it says enter a formula in B2 that adds cell D5 from worksheet Q4 to the value of A2. <clears throat> so in B2, we do equals. We click worksheet Q4. We select D5. Then plus, we go back into worksheet Q3. 
we select our cell A2. And when we hit enter, you should get 87,365. <laughs> Like I said, that's kind of a review because we did that with the bakery, canned goods, meat, paper stuff, a couple classes. So now in worksheet four and five, we're going to do what's called pivot tables. And like I said, we're going to do this the entire class on Wednesday when we do homework seven together. So if you click on Worksheet Q4 and click the Insert tab, you should have a button here that says Pivot Table. When you click the Pivot Table button, it asks you for a table range. So we highlight everything in our worksheet here that has information. So it's going to be Worksheet Q4, A1 through D200. <clears throat> you can do either new worksheet or existing worksheet. I'm going to do new worksheet just because it looks nicer and cleaner. And then I click OK. <clears throat> and it populates a new worksheet here. So we're asked to display the higher salary for each job category in each city. So here where it says fields, we click city, job category, and salary. <clears throat> but you'll notice here on values, it says sum of salary, but we want to have the highest salary. So we right click that carrot, or we click that carrot rather, and select value field settings and change from sum to max and click OK. If you're on a Mac, you have to click the carrot next to salary up in the top area <clears throat> before you do that. And it'll give you that option. So now over here, we just have the city with each job title and the maximum of the salaries. Now in worksheet five, we're asked <clears throat> to display only employees who work in Chicago or Seattle. So we click insert, pivot table again, we highlight our range of information we're using. I'm going to do new worksheet again, just because it looks better. <clears throat> and for the fields, we're going to use employee ID, because we need all of the employees and the city. <clears throat> But in order to get only Chicago and Seattle, <clears throat> I have to click the little carrot next to it where it says select all. I click the check mark next to it to unselect all. And then I simply select Chicago and Seattle only. <clears throat> so right now we have all of the cities. When you only select Chicago and Seattle and click OK, you only get those two cities. So we now have the total number of employees by having the sum of employee ID. Any questions on that? No? Like I said, we'll do much more with pivot tables on Wednesday. <clears throat> In worksheet 
Q6, we're asked to display employees in ascending order of salary. So we simply click the top of D column, which has salary in it. Sort and filter A to Z, because we want the lowest to the highest. And we get a sort warning. <clears throat> what do you want to do? Continue with current selection? No, we want to expand the selection. So this way they're all sorted rather than just have the salary sorted by expanding the selection, it sorts everything together. <clears throat> so that, you know, Portland legal remains matched with the salary. So then we click sort and now our lowest salary there and our largest salary is down the bottom here. Now, with worksheet Q7, you'll see there's just a bunch of random numbers here. <clears throat> what we're going to do is use conditional formatting so that values between 35 and 60 have a light green background and darker green numbers. So here in the styles pane under the home tab, where it says conditional formatting, <clears throat> you're going to want to set a new rule. And you'll see here there's a bunch of different options for new rule. We're going to do format only cells that contain. <clears throat> now on a Mac, it's a little different. I believe you'll have to select the option from down here for what you want to do. So we're going to do between 35 and 60. <clears throat> and then in order to change those colors to match what we want, light green background and darker green numbers, we do format. Fill is our <clears throat> background color. So click on any kind of light green you see like that. And then our font color should be dark green. So we click font and then here color and select like a darker green. So I'm just going to select olive green there because that looks a little darker. <clears throat> then you click OK and OK again. And you'll notice nothing happened. It's because I did not give a range. So you would click the top of column A. Conditional formatting, new rule, format only cells that contain between 35 and 60. And format, do the same thing again. For font, pick a dark green. For fill, pick like a lighter green. And then click OK twice. And any number between 35 and 60 should now show up with the darker green background. Excuse me, the lighter green background and the darker green text. Any questions on that one? No? All right, we're making good time. So last but not least is going to be worksheet Q8 with nothing in it. <clears throat> we're going to use goal seek again. <clears throat> we're going to 
we're going to assume you're making a salary of 70000 Your total spending is on food, 12000 House payments, you're making monthly mortgage payments on a house that costs 610000 with a 30-year loan at 4.8 interest rate. Utilities are 2000 Auto expenses are 34000 You want to save 16000 per year. You have the opportunity to lower the interest rate on your loan. What interest rate would you need to be lowered to in order to reach the savings goal of $16,000? So we type all of our assumptions in just like we found them. Food is 12,000. House payments, 610,000, 30 years, 4.8% interest. <clears throat> Oops. It would help if I type these incorrectly. Food, 12,000. House payments, 61,030, 4.8%. We'll leave C blank. Utilities, 2,000. Auto expenses thirty four hundred <clears throat> salary seventy thousand savings. Sixteen thousand. <clears throat> so the reason I left column C blank is so I could use the payment function to calculate what our mortgage is. So in cell C five, I do equals minus sign PMP. Open parentheses. I select our four point eight percent interest, comma. Our 30 yearly payments, comma, our 610,000, <clears> our present value. And then I close parentheses. I put that negative in front so that we get a positive number. Because anytime you use the PMT or payment formula, you get a negative number. So negative times a negative gives us positive. <clears throat> So you should get $38,781.32. Then in the cell below it, we do equals. We select F2, our salary minus, open parentheses, A2 plus <clears throat> D2 plus E2 plus C5 here. <clears throat> Close out the parentheses. So we end up with $13,818.68. But we want that to be $16,000. So we're going to copy this formula from C6 into cell C2 here. <clears throat> so now that we have our current amount of savings, we're going to use goal seek to change that to try and get 16,000 by changing our interest rate. So we go to data, 
What if analysis goal seek? Set sale should be C2, that 13,000. Two value should be 16,000, the amount we want for our savings by changing cell B4. We were told that we have a 4.8% interest rate, but they can lower it. So if they're gonna lower it, we wanna take them up on that so that we have more savings. A little over 2,000 extra savings per year adds up over time. So it should be set value C2, two value 16,000 by changing cell B4. When we click OK, it should run. <clears throat> we click OK again. It now shows us 16,000 there instead of the 13,000. Our 4.8% now changed to 4.30631, et cetera, which just displays as 4.31%. So are there any questions on that? Again, it's kind of a review of what we did last week with Goal Seek. So like I said, in class on Wednesday, we're going to go through Excel Homework 7 together, which is just pivot tables. Next week on Monday is the <clears throat> midterm exam review. And then next week, is the midterm exam. Um, so I asked the other class this, and I'll ask you guys this as well. Do you want it to be due that day? We're only gonna have the Zoom meeting for you to pop in and ask questions if you need. So the way it's gonna be set up is it'll open at uh, let's say noon when class starts. And you could either have it be due uh, that night, Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. or following Sunday at the end of spring break, like I have it set up. The issue is um, since you're on spring break, I don't want you guys to forget about it and not do it because it's 20% of the grade. So what do you think the better option would be? You can Keep just pop your it. answer. Go ahead. Keep it as you have it for after spring break. Okay. All right. Um, so James, I'm going to try and get an answer to your email ASAP. I don't know what happened there. Um, and like you said, at some point later today, I'll set up the groups and post up an announcement for you guys. Um, if there are no other questions, that's all I wanted to cover today. And uh, I'll see everybody on Wednesday. We'll do the homework seven for pivot tables. Um, as a reminder, make sure that you're saving all of these items to refer back to as your quote unquote notes for the midterm next Wednesday. All right. If there's no other questions, I'll see everybody on Wednesday. Take care now. Uh, professor, the midterm is what we got to do with our groups, or is that individual? The midterm is individual. Okay. The only thing uh, for the groups is down in the last folder, the group project, those um, three problems that we went together through. You basically each do one of them. I did the balance worksheet in its entirety. I did most of the mortgage calculator in its entirety. You would just have to do the just enough and dream home, like find the um, link for them and update the, um, the cost of the house and post the link. And then the cost benefit analysis, I did all that. Um, I forget what day this recording is, but look back and it should be there. And then basically you and your two teammates just set up a 10-minute presentation. Basically, hey, 
these were the problems or issues we encountered while doing these three problems. And it should be set up to be like 10 minutes long. And you submit those three problems. Um, and you could create a PowerPoint if you want um, to help you get to that 10 minute mark. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Professor. No problem. Take care.